Welcome to the Anatomy of a Rifle Scope series, where we are going to break down all the different components that make up a rifle scope and explain how each part works and what each part is responsible for. We're going to start off with the body tube, something that every rifle scope has because like the chassis of a car, its job is to hold everything together and without it, you just have a pile of useless parts. In front of me here, I have a disassembled Titan 5 to 25. It's a prop that we're going to use extensively throughout the series. But what you need to look at now is the body tube and all these parts that fit inside the body tube. It's probably more than you expected to see. Most modern body tubes, like this one I have in front of me here, are made of a single piece of aluminum. And you'll find that there are different alloys that have different properties that may be selected for different purposes. Some alloys are easier to machine and a little bit cheaper. Some alloys are a little bit harder to machine, a little bit more expensive, but much stronger. Shapes and forms also vary. The main tube diameter where the mounts attach can be one inch in diameter or 30 millimeters or 34 millimeters or even bigger, like in the case of our prismatic scopes. The goal for almost all manufacturers is to keep this part as light as possible without sacrificing the structural integrity that's required for the specific use case of that scope. Some body tubes have a straight profile in front, as is the case with most LPVOs. Another example would be our 5x30 prismatic series. But generally speaking, we need a larger objective lens to gather more light, especially with high magnification rifle scopes. So it's normal to find your objective lens flaring out like this to form what we call an objective bell. For small mechanical components like the turrets, it's a no-brainer that precise machining tolerances are required for proper performance. But what most people don't think about is how important it is for lenses to be correctly aligned, correctly held in place, and for other mechanical parts that move forward and backwards like the parallax cell within the body tube to also be within spec. So the actual machining tolerances and the precision of the way that the body tube is manufactured is very, very important. You can have the most expensive lenses in your rifle scope, but if they aren't aligned or spaced correctly, then they won't perform to their potential. Think of it like wheel alignment on your car. You can have the best wheels, but if they're not all moving in the same direction, something's just not going to feel right. In the center of the body tube, you'll find mounting points for turrets, side parallax and illumination dials. And these are normally in the form of threads or uh, threaded holes for screws or a combination of both of those things. At the rear, you'll also find a cutout for your magnification mechanism and a mounting point for your ocular tube. You may also notice threads inside the tube itself. These are for installation of lens assemblies, which are held in place with bonding agents and lock rings. Here we have a typical objective lens assembly, and this would be a typical expanded view of an objective lens assembly. If the lenses are made to spec, and if the lock rings are made to spec, and if the body tube is made to spec, then when those lock rings are torqued down, everything should be held perfectly without there being any room for movement. One of the quality control tests we do at Element is to take every scope that comes off the production line and give it a knock on a block of wood or rubber from different directions and then put it back on a collimator and check if there's been any point of impact shift, which would simulate recoil or bump in real life. Those are meant to pass and that indicates that everything has been built to tolerance and cannot shift. Next up, we'll be talking about one of the many components that the body tube is responsible for holding together, and that's the lenses. If you want to learn more, visit us at element-optics.com, subscribe on YouTube, or follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.